Hey guys and gals, uh, welcome to episode two. Uh, last episode, we uh, covered anxiety, you know, for about nine minutes. I think in this episode, since it coincides with anxiety, I figured I'd talk about sleep. Damn it. Hey guys and gals, uh, welcome to episode two. I think in this episode, I'm going to discuss sleep. I think the last episode, I talked in a little about anxiety, and I think the two coincide with each other. Uh, sleep, you know, in the military, we were bred to wake up at 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. Usually would go to bed to probably about midnight, 1. And I think our bodies, after... You know, four plus years, in my case, 20 years, our bodies kind of got used to working off of about three to four hours of sleep. Now that I'm retired, uh, I maintained that schedule for about four years post-retirement. Uh, when I say that, I don't say it because I wanted to. I say it, I, I say it in, in, in a sense that my body didn't want to go to sleep due to my mental illnesses, uh, primarily anxiety, PTSD, depression. Uh, I would find myself trying to go to sleep about 10 and I couldn't do it. I would just lay in bed probably till about one or two, finally wake up, get up about 5.30, get the kids ready for school and be on my way to work. What I found out uh, during this time was the lack of sleep. You know, it's it's recommended to get about seven to eight hours of sleep. And what I found out was, is I was finding myself to be more irritable. I would go to work probably about eight o'clock. I would fall asleep probably about 10 o'clock. I wouldn't say I fall asleep. My body would want to go to sleep and I would have to get up and walk around. And I say this uh, because sleep is sleep is important. You know, you, you get these senior leaders who say, oh, sleep, you know, I'll sleep when I'm dead. Either full of crap or themselves find that they have a mental illness that they don't want to talk about. In my, in my case, sleep insomnia, you know, I'd be so deprived that you know, my psychiatrist would state that I was hallucinating. And when I say that is, you know, I would go to sleep probably about one or two and I would have these dreams, you know, I'd have these dreams of these three little kids, uh, two boys and a girl, and they would just have these massive black eyes. And when I say black eyes, I don't mean like they were punched. I mean like their entire eye was black. And I, I could be having the most happiest dream of my life. And somewhere in there, I would see these three kids. You know, they, they, they wouldn't be doing anything. They would either be sitting, looking in a window. But it was just their eyes that caught me off guard. And I'd wake up, you know, time to do my daily routine. And it was just disturbing. Um... You know, I'd have several other episodes where, you know, I'd be fast asleep about one o'clock and I don't know if I was dreaming or if I would wake up, but I would see these figures staring over me and that flared my anxiety to, to an extreme where, you know, my heart would probably be beating about 135 beats per minute. And I would just wake up in, in cold sweats. And it, it, it went on for probably for about three to four years in, until I actually opened up and started talking about it. Uh, I, I, saw, I went to the VA, saw a VA psychiatrist. You know, she was very great in helping me identify what I needed to do and what I didn't need to do. And... You know, I, I don't know if I want to contribute those nightmares or anything to the military. Because during my first four years of my career, 
Uh, I've been deployed probably about three and a half years out of four of those years. Uh, anywhere from a combat zone in Africa to a UDP to a deployment in South America to uh, different areas of the U.S. Uh, to learn some type of special tactics. I don't remember what they were called. Uh, but it, it, it would... It, it, I, I, just thinking about it today, you know, it gives me, it makes me speechless. Uh, I, I wrote a sleep journal for the VA and it read like a horror story. Uh, I don't think my psychiatrist knew what to say at the time uh, or she, she didn't have, you know, the knowledge of what that was. Uh, again, prescribed me some more medication, try to help with the nightmares. Uh you know, I, I used to have nightmares of Marines that I've lost in combat. Uh, I remember this time I was one of two Marines stationed with the Army in Iraq. And when I when Marines, you know, it doesn't matter who or what you are. A Marine can sniff out a Marine from a mile away. And since I was a sergeant at the time working for a chief, a Marine Corps chief warrant officer, it was just me and him and a bunch of soldiers and a couple of sailors. And I befriended, you know, this, this gunnery sergeant out there. You know, he was, he worked on some type of uh, bit team, mitt team. I can't remember what it was. Uh, but the, the reason we befriended is because I was helping them out and he was, he was pissed at the soldiers that he was working with and we just started talking and you know i'm not gonna say we became good friends or fraternization but we became you know combat buddies uh he would say hey what's going on we'd talk you know try to relieve some combat stress and one day his team came back uh bullet holes all up in his humvee and come to find out i mean he was he was shot through the neck and it, it 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 traumatized me uh where i would I, my anxiety would kick over and i would start picturing what actually happened and it just i i think that was a con contribution to you know why why i didn't want to sleep you know i thought about if i if i went to bed i would miss out on something but you know i i went to uh I, I, unfortunately, I had to go to his Humvee since I was one of the only Marines and collect his his belongings. And, you know, just the sight of seeing brains and blood covering that Humvee kind of set me over the edge. You know, it, it made me think about my own personal well-being. Uh, it didn't want me to make me leave. It, it just it made me mad. It, it caused unforeseen mental issues that I was pissed off at everything and everybody, you know, is it's, it's kind of hard to make friends. And when you do make friends, the last thing you want to do is lose them. So fast forward, you know, present time, post-retirement, um, uh, I, I spent a good three years sleeping this way. And with the anxiety, it kind of started putting me over the edge. Uh, it, it, it made me think, you know, is is this the life that I'm going to live? It made me started thinking that I was worthless. I was better off dead. Uh, I will talk about suicide in a different episode, but I tried to commit suicide because that's, I, that's what I thought the path was. You know, without sleep, your mind starts wear, or wandering and creating scenarios that didn't happen that they're true. You know, as I stated, I went to the VA. They put me on some medication. Uh, it, it it helped a little bit, but then they would start giving me sleep pills. And it set my mental capacity even, or I would say it, it made my sleep even less. Because when I took those pills, I would be groggy or I would get too much sleep. And I would think that I slept too much and I'm missing out on stuff. And it made my nightmares worse. So it kind of contrad, I would say it, it kind of counteracted the, 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 the nightmare medication that they gave me. Uh, I, I say this openly. Uh, I, I very rarely talk about it 
but I think, you know, my stories going public would help, you know, you know, my, my brother, my veteran brother and sisters open up and, and talk about it, uh, because sleep is important, uh, you know, to get a better night's sleep, it, it depends, you know, your mattress, you know, y- your, your home life balance, uh, you just got to start taking care of yourself. Uh, stop thinking about the past. Start thinking about the present and the future and moving forward. Uh, if if you've got any comments about sleep, drop them. Drop them down in the comment section. I'd love to hear them. I'd, I'd love, you know, to talk about it. Because uh, I think sleep is a very important part of life. And if we don't get enough of it, you know, given that veteran suicide rate is high, and I think contrib- con- a con- contributor to that is veterans not getting enough sleep. So with that being said, I hope you guys appreciate this video, uh, my journey to mental illness, Andrew Unfiltered. So if you want to see more, just give me a thumbs up, subscribe to our cha- to my channel, Andrew Unfiltered, and I'll see you in episode three. Thanks.